are two additional components to consider when deploying task mining for Abbey Timeline. The first is the recording utility. This gets installed on the end user client machine or desktop. This is what does the actual log collection, uh, generates the logs based on the keystrokes the user might be performing throughout their work. Secondarily, there's the recording service. Now this is what you see on screen. This would typically be used by an administrator of the solution. The recording service is going to collect the logs from those end user machines, give you the ability to create recording policies, also review logs prior to transmitting any data from this recording service into Abbey Timeline for analysis. So let's start by looking at our templates. This is where we define those recording policies. There's a number of options we have here. When do we want to begin recording for the end users? Is it when they first log on to their machine? Or do we give them more flexibility in turning on the recorder when they're ready? Do we want to take screenshots as a part of our logs? If we want to take screenshots, do we want to blur or obfuscate that information? This way, we get the context of what they were doing on the screen. But if we were to hand this log over to somebody in our automation area, an engineer, they're not going to be able to take any information off of those screenshots while still having that context. You'll see an example of that. Do we want to schedule recording? We can set these rec recorders to run based on some predetermined schedule. And we can also merge multiple hosts. So if I'm a, an, an end user that's working on both my machine as well as a virtualized server or environment, I can bring together those two logs into a single log instance. An important area here within the templates is this include or exclude this. This is where we specify what applications or websites we're interested in recording data for or never interested in recording data for. If we use the include list, we're going to specify the specific apps, the specific sites that we know we want to collect information for for our analysis. And we will never record. No information will be entered from any other part of that user's work stream. Okay. Similarly, we could have the exclude list. It's almost the inverse. We, we specify the specific apps or sites we never want to include information for, and we will never record when they're in that part of the screen, but always in the, in the others. Okay. So this is where we get very specific outputs as it pertains to the logs and the analysis we're looking to run. We can also do transformation of string information, whether it be websites or input strings. So we can use regular expressions. Security is paramount here. Okay, so we never want to record where there's an expectation of privacy. We want to be able to mask any information. And uh, the other point being, all of this data will be kept within the client network. Right? Nothing ever leaves the client network until uh, they are, have the chance to review it, make sure it's viable for InfoSec, uh, there's nothing sensitive, and that it works for the analysis that they're looking to do. Recorders is a list of the different machines where we have the recorder utility installed. So here's a list of machines, when they were added, what's their current status, how many logs have they generated, etc. Here's an example of your log list. So here's where I would go if I've collected some logs and wanted to review the information to see what we've got to work with. So I'll open up a single log and so you can see an example of what we have. It's a collection of clicks, types, copies, pastes, a number of different applications that you might be working in. Here is examples of screenshots which have been obfuscated. So once I have a chance to review this information as the administrator, make sure again there's nothing sensitive that I wouldn't want to pass to timeline, be it in the cloud or within my own environment. Also, the, um, it's this, use, this information and data is analytically usable for me, so I actually want to run further analysis on this. I can then push that information to timeline by clicking the load to project, and that will push the data, allow me to start working with my task information. Once I've got my log or group of logs loaded into a timeline project for analysis, the next step is that I want to break these logs down into repeatable tasks. 
So what you see on screen is the task definition editor. And you can see I've got a couple of tasks that have already been created here based on the four logs that I've loaded. You can create a task by simply dragging any one of these log entries to the right, to create a new task, name it, and you're on your way. Now let me describe how data is collected and displayed here. There's a hierarchy. The highest level of hierarchy is the application level. And you can see that via the icons here to the left. To the right of that and a level lower would be your form level. A form represents a specific web page or application window that a user might be operating within. The third and lowest level of the hierarchy would be the control level. And I can go down to this view where I see the actual interactions that the end user was having with their screen, whether it be by a button or a text box or a drop down list. I have all these levels of, of roll up. The idea being I want to make it as straightforward and easy to digest for the user who's trying to make sense of what was happening as a part of this logs processing. Now when we're defining what steps are included or not included within a given task, I have a few different options here as well. As you can see, I can define parallel process tasks. I went and started an expense report in this scenario, took a break and started another task, my registration form, completed a few steps, came back to complete my expense report before going on to conclude this registration form task. So you see, I have flexibility in what's included or not. I can define what starts a task, is there a specific step, and then similarly, what's going to end a task, one or more steps. I can require specific forms to be included in a given task, remove explicitly forms. So I have tons of flexibility in how we're defining the work that we see here as tasks. Now once I define a task, it'll go off and find all the other iterations that match similarly that sequence of steps so that I can understand exactly how often, as you'll see, any given task might occur and how much time is elapsing, how many different variations, etc. Once I've got my tasks broken out from my logs, it's time to start doing some analysis. What you see on screen are a few task specific anal analysis modules. The top being a, a table that's allowing us to compare and contrast things like how much time has elapsed. This log coverage percentage represents how much time as a percentage of overall processing time was spent in one task versus another. How many different events occur in a given task? The complexity metric is an interesting one, right? Because each one of these is not going to be deemed equal as it pertains to the, sim the simplicity for building automation. Out of, out of one task or another. Zero is the most simple, straightforward task to automate. One being much more difficult to build automation for. So you'd want to consider that level of complexity when, ta when take, undertaking any given automation project. And this metric pertains to how many different applications are we touching? How many different variations to a different task are there. I've also got a cost calculation module where I can start to begin to understand dollars saved. So I've got the return, log coverage, hours returned to the business, along with dollars saved, juxtaposed by, well, how complex would this type of a project be? Below, we've got the similar types of information. In this scenario, you're, you're probably going to want to work from your bottom right of this chart where the highest gain up to the top left where it's lowest gain, highest complexity. I've also got the ability to look at exactly where time was spent at an application level or at a level lower and look at the form level exactly where we spending time within these given logs. I've got uh, the ability to look at our process schema or our task schema. And again, we're using that hierarchical drill down here to go from the application level. In this case, I went from Outlook to Word to Chrome to Excel. And if I want to drill in on any given application, I can double click and see all the interrelated steps that happen within that given app. Right? And even drilling into the control level or understanding this was a button that we clicked on at that moment in time. And here's the screenshot associated.
Now the last view I want to show you is the path view. This shows us all the different variants and also gives us the capability of generating process definition diagrams. That documentation that we look to hand over to our automation engineer giving them the foundation for how they can then go off and build that actual automation engine uh, and this would include not only the log information but also those screenshots that we talked about.